know I fucked up. Got caught cheating. Welcome back to the Curvaceous Bounty of Sin City on Vegas on that radio.com, the final frontier of free speech where we get to talk about and say whatever the cock sucking fuck shit balls we want. <laughs> And about porno conventions. And porno conventions, and nipples, <laughs> and titty sandwiches. Trannies. And trannies, it and ball sacks on the dance floor. It's, it's just a beautiful conglomeration of everything fucking fabulous. It is a BBW Fan Fest recap. Whew. Directly, the same day of the last day of the show. I haven't even been home. For those of you, <laughs> for those of you who... Uh, are a subscribe to if you if you go to our UStream channel and you join our circle or join our connections or so, I don't know what it's called on UStream, you get an alert every time we go live. Yep, which I reminds you. I get an email. Yeah, you get an email. Um, uh, you can get it on Twitter. It it goes to our Twitter as well that we're going live on UStream, and so you know that you can tune in because um, it's BBW season here in Vegas. And uh, next, next up is well rounded. That's right. And we're actually trying to work on one of the BBW events for August. That's right. So next Friday, uh, next Friday because during the day in the morning, masochists. we're going to be talking to a lot of BBW uh, businesses and uh, vendors at uh, Well Rounded being held at the Plaza this year. I didn't say Union Plaza this year. <laughs> and then Saturday night, we'll be talking to all those drunk ladies from Utah. Drunk and people from everywhere. From everywhere. Uh, I'm, I, if you uh, if you were fans of ours last year, um, you actually go to our YouTube channel and uh, you can find those videos of uh, the interviews that we did last year during a party. That was so fun. That was a and lot you know of what? fun. Gunner, our buddy Gunner, Gunner, Gunner! from Sweden, him and Anders, they are the most faithful BBW Las Vegas fans. They come all the way from Sweden every single summer. <coughs> he said to me, he came up, he goes, now, are you going to be at Well Rounded? I said, yeah, we'll be there Friday, Saturday. <sighs> Good, because I have to get an interview. I have to be on the radio show again. We have two sidetracks with Gunnar. Go. Yes, because this morning That's we were right. standing out there and it was a little bit early for we were like, what time does it open? And we we're not, not until 12. And, and the, those two guys were out there and I was just, I was amazed, first of all, because I love listening to them talk. And I was just like, li you know, we were looking, listening to each other. And he was like, tell him the other one, I love these girls because he's like, you know, when they're not on the show, they're just like regular girls. He's like, then when they get on the show, they just cuss like <laughs> profanity <laughs> everywhere or something like that he said and it was just so funny he was like they're just like regular and then they cuss like crazy <laughs> like <laughs> well it was so funny i see cute anders he's walking around the vendor floor today and uh, he's got two uh cds that he purchased so i walk up and put my arms around him this way and he thinks that i'm hugging him but i'm grabbing the videos from behind his back <laughs> and i go Anders, I have to see what you watch. And he had two le BBW lesbian porn videos. And I of go, course he did. And he looked at me and I go, that's okay. I masturbate to lesbian porn too. <laughs> BBW lesbian <laughs> porn. And he goes, yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so my sidetrack uh, gunner story is um, during uh, the plush night after the, the plush party after the awards show, I uh, was getting ready to leave. And on the dance floor is gunner on his hands and knees and riding his back like a cowboy cowgirl rather with her sash that was around her shoulders uh being used as reins across his mouth was gunner on his knees with julia sands riding oh his back God, you know what it, it was a beautiful picture and gunner was bucking was like happy. the happy horse that he probably was <laughs> you're absolutely right those Love fucking them. Europeans are kinky bastards. Love that. You know what? You can always count on Gunner and Anders to be. When I met Anders, the first. Now, Gunner has been at the Bash forever. But Anders came. It was about six or seven years ago the first time. And he spoke zero English. <laughs> and he's sitting at the table. And you know me. I go, I like to talk to everybody. And I walk up there. And I'm talking to him. And all he could say was, eggs. Eggs. <laughs> Well, come to find out from Gunner, his family, because I said, well, what do you, how do you work, eggs? His family owns a big egg farm <laughs> in Sweden. <laughs> he, works, he works in the family business and all these things. It was eggs, 
But now I've trained him to say when he sees me, he goes, "You're my favorite gilf." <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they were. It was so. It was so great sitting, standing out there talking to them this morning. Because at one point they said something about being Swedish or something, and and uh, I turned and he was like, "You speak Swedish?" I was like, "No, no, no." And uh, Gunner said something about uh, the chef on Muppets. I said no, I could never understand him either. So he's like <laughs> me either. <laughs> so it was funny. Uh, Anders uh, came up into the motorboat booth, and uh, the first time he did it, I can't remember which girl it was, but it was one of the giant titties. I mean, oh, not just they, like uh, Anders they, saved his money for giant titties. Oh yeah, he <laughs> gi- Anders is very obviously a giant titty boy, um, and he. The first time he did it, he he got in there and he did it and it was all gentle and nice and there was boobies slapping his face. But when he stood up, he was beet red from the top of his head. <laughs> all the, I mean, I swear his hands were red. This boy blushed so hard, I thought he was going to lose all the blood and just die. Just, it was hilarious. Well, Gunner, Gunner calls himself, he's the self-proclaimed motorboat king. He did that la- actually last year at the bash. He was the self-proclaimed motorboat king. Look at that picture of okay, us. Okay, so I page. just got over over my shoulder, DJ said, because DJ said in the whole class for the face-sitting class, and apparently, Anders got sat on in the glass. Oh! <laughs> see that. What? what? It's on video. He got video. He got video. He got a video. He's the, okay. So Anders does not like to be squashed, but he is totally in the motorboat. He, he will try. Yeah, well, he said he'll try anything. <laughs> Him and Gunner, they they were uh, heavy on the motorboat booth the last two That's days. That's awesome. I love them. It was fun. It was great. All right. So we sidetracked completely. Uh oh. Yeah, what, what were, were we talking about? I don't remember. But it was something to do you, with you, Gunner. Your, your ketchup. Oh, my ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about? What was my ketchup? I know it started with Gunner. Uh no Sitting no on the couch? no we just on got the couch to talking about that yeah I masturbated when we uh, everybody left my son and his father were at the house because they're packing up to go to California this week they're uh he's been with his dad all weekend but he didn't pack his bag I didn't want him to take his bag with him there's no point in taking it for a weekend so he uh, came over and they were doing some laundry before they had to go and and packing their bags and they left and then Cali guy he had to go home because he's you know. Basically, he just shows up, drops his shit, takes a 45-minute nap, takes the shit he needs for the next day, and leaves. And that's all he's been doing <laughs> at his house. So his house is a mess. You guys are at my house. My house is a fucking disaster. Well, by the way, did you find my compact? I didn't even look. I was masturbating. <laughs> oh, I was too I'm busy. Sorry. I got home, and everybody left, and I was trying to take a nap on the couch, and I just had this sudden urge I needed to masturbate right then and there. <laughs> and I masturbated. I just needed to masturbate. But that's because it was way too much titted I don't know what it was. It was just an immediate urge I needed to release some tension i guess or something <laughs> i don't know oh man we had such fabulous sex in the last couple of days not last night though last night i was exhausted we left the party before midnight and that is unheard of for so any one of us I was so yeah, sweet cheeks was i was hot all weekend they finally turned the air down in the dance room and everybody else is freezing cold i'm the only one comfortable i'm like i'm comfortable this yeah, is great this is exactly where i, I want it to be Mike's jacket over me i, I was having an issues too i wasn't feeling good and i was sweating i was hot in there i was freezing yeah. and then- so so we decided to leave early for like five. let's try to get more than four hours of sleep or three hours of sleep tonight so we went home and uh we laid down we decided <laughs> Callie guys so what are we gonna do are we gonna cuddle am i gonna massage your feet your back your legs are we gonna fuck what are we gonna do and and i just said can i have to choose one can't we just do all of the above and he goes okay <laughs> so we get naked we're in bed and we're cuddling right and um we're cuddling and we're cuddling and at some point I realized the light is still on and I just know that we're not going to have sex because at this point I, I just know it's not happening. And uh, so I said, babe, are, are we going to turn off the light before we go to sleep? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I got it. So then this morning we were talking about, you know, falling asleep last night and he goes, you actually fell asleep twice before you fell asleep. <laughs> I said, what, what do you mean? He goes... Well, before you asked me, Wait, to were, you, were you stroking his cock at the time? No, <laughs> no I thought I said to her, "You fell asleep during sex." <laughs> no, 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 no. We were just cuddling, just wrapped all up in each other, and my butt all pressed against his penis and stuff. Because um, my butt does not have uh, a voracious appetite for eating do- cock or balls like Alexia's does, so I can smush my my ass right up against him. And uh, yeah, mine wants to eat cock and balls. I don't know what is it's wrong a with my poor ass. ass. Her ass. It is a vor ass. She is a vor ass. It's it's that's a it's, whole new word. Vor it's cocknivorous. Cocknivorous. <laughs> I'm, I'm tweeting that. <laughs> Tweet of the night. Cocknivorous. And um, so 
he said, as we were cuddling, I apparently fell asleep twice. I said, how do you know I fell asleep twice while we were cuddling? He goes, the snoring kind of gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I have no, I have no comeback for that. So apparently I fell asleep twice <laughs> before I fell asleep. Uh, I don't even, I really, I remember him getting up to turn off the lights and he put his pajamas on because I keep my room somewhere around 68 degrees to sleep in. So he has to have one of my blankets and my sheet and flannel pajamas on to sleep in my bedroom. (laughs) I sleep naked with no blankets on. Oh my God, no. (laughs) And, uh, so I don't really remember him actually getting into the bed. I remember him putting his pajamas on and then I don't really remember much of anything until my jackass neighbors. Okay. Here's part of my catch up. (laughs) So uh, starting about three months ago, our neighbor lady who is on the homeowners association board starts sending us letters in the mail. She can't come over and knock on the fucking door. (laughs) She starts sending us letters in the mail. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be having my roof redone. And, um, you know, I was wondering if you wanted to be in on it because sometimes they give group discounts and blah, 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 blah. I don't know if y'all remember a couple of years ago, we had the bathroom fall into the kitchen. And uh, so we're kind of still recovering financially from that. And we just don't have the equity to pull out of the house to put into putting a new roof on the house, especially since our roof works just fine. There's nothing wrong. It's not leaking. It's not falling off. It's fine. There's no need to fight. Don't fix it if it ain't fucking broken. And, you know, we politely just didn't respond. We figured she'd get the hint that we didn't come and say, hey, that's a great idea. So one day she waylays my son while he's outside playing in the backyard and tells him to come and get me. He comes in. He goes, mommy, the lady who lives next door wants to talk to you. I'm like, what? So I go out in the backyard, and and she's trying to convince me to convince mom to get the house, the the thing done. And she mentions, well, you know, the homeowners association is going to be cracking down on the the shake shingles pretty soon. I didn't say anything, but through my mind ran this thing about if, if the homeowners association wants us to make a structural change to the house, they have to pay for it. Right. Um, if they want to paint, if they want us to paint the house a different color, they have to pay for it. They they can't dictate structural changes to our home unless they are going to pay for it. Right. And they can't dictate it to a particular home. They have to do it to all of them. Right. So apparently she must have sent this letter out to everybody on the street because they're now the, uh, her house, the house next to her, and the house on the other side of us are all having their roofs done at the exact same time by the exact same group of fucking beaner cock ass Mexicans. And I'm only mad at them for this one reason. Number one, only one of these fuckers speaks English. And number two, they have no concept of fire safety. None. And they're taking up half of our guest parking with tile roofs on pallets just parked in a guest parking spot, not in these people's garage or on their fucking driveway or anything else, like just out on the fucking driveway, on the spots where our guests are supposed to park. Two days ago, I show up, and they have a giant forklift parked across three parking spots and a dumpster in the road. And I'm pissed off already. Where are my guests supposed to park? Where am I supposed to park? What what, what the hell is supposed to happen? And then this morning, at 7 o'clock in the motherfucking morning, they start this fucking thing up. And they've, of course, got to, because it's enormous, and we have these tiny little roads in our complex, because it's just, usually there's barely enough room for two cars to go past each other, because there's rarely two people passing each other going one direction or the other. So, so it has to make like a 65-point turn, which means it's got to back up. So you get, me, 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 and it, because they're working on my neighbor's house, and this thing is a story and a half tall, it's right outside my fucking window. Me, 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 After you've me. had two hours of sleep every night for the last three minutes. <sighs> so I know that it's waking Callie guy up because I can immediately feel him stiffening up behind me, and I know it woke me up because I'm the fuck awake, but then it turned off, and they didn't use it for a while, and we started to go back to sleep again. Me, me, oh, sweet Jesus, mother of God. So finally, it's time for us to get up and start getting ready and getting everything packed up to go down to the station. I go to get my car, or not the station, but the Tuscany. I go to get my car to pull it up in front of the house because I have all of the radio equipment at my house. And I figure I'll just pull up the car, we'll put it all in the car, and then we'll leave. They have this forklift parked across the side of the road, across the road, across the entire road. You couldn't drive a bicycle 
around this fucking thing. And now the only problem I have with that is, is we are the end of the complex. There is no road that goes out behind us. There's no way to get out from where we're at. Right. It's one entry in, one entry out. Right. So in most of the other parts of the neighborhood, you Which can I kind of make... a fire hazard. Um, it's not a fire hazard because we have a road. It isn't a house. Uh, well, it isn't a house, but on the road, okay. you have a pathway. You can get two cars in. The, the fire truck can get in. It's fine. Okay. They have the fucking road blocked. And I'm already cranky and pissed off at them for me. 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 It's seven o'clock in the fucking morning on a Saturday. <laughs> Sunday. On Sunday. On Sunday. Why are you fucking assholes in church? <laughs> what the fuck? Seven o'clock. They're bad Meh. Catholics. Whatever. Fucking. Anyway. Yeah, oh, by the so way. I come out and I say, you guys need to move this. I need to get my car to my house. And this fucking beaner, who obviously has not actually driven around the neighborhood, yells down at me from the roof, drive around. I said, there is no way to get around. You need to move this. And then I go get my car and I start pulling up and I'm going to run into this fucking thing if it's not out of the way. So he backs it up, pulls it up and parks it right the fuck in front of my house. He saw me walk out of my house. He pulled this thing up and parked it right the fuck in front of my house, blocking my driveway and the gate into my house. I lean out. I open the car door. I lean out the fucking car door. I said, you need to move that fucking thing. That's my fucking house. <laughs> I think she just grew a little Brooklyn. <laughs> so she, so this fucker moves it, and he is giving me the stank eye the whole fucking time, right? Because he had to climb off the roof, because they were there's no one down there. It was just the forklift fucking parked in the road. There's no one to operate. That he had to climb down the fucking forklift to operate it. <laughs> so then I pull the car up in front of the house. I open the gate, and we are obviously loading stuff into the car. So apparently, at some point, we're going to be turning the car around and going back out the way we came in. They pull that fucking pork forklift and park across the road again. And I came out, and I looked at him, and I said, This is a fire hazard, and it's fucking illegal to park and block a public street, because our streets are considered public. They're listed as public streets. I said, and if it stays here for anything longer than what it takes you to unload that pallet off of it and onto that roof of that house, I will call the fucking cops. And beaners don't like cops, especially when they can't speak English, because you know, they're probably not legal. <laughs> they had that thing moved. They had it parked up in a parking spot. They didn't, they didn't fuck with me after that. I ain't fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucking pissed. I was so pissed. Oh. And they gave me this stink eye the whole time. And I'm like, you know what? That's right. Crazy fucking white bitch at 8.30 in the fucking morning on Sunday. And she's exhausted. I'm as tired. Time. I'm hungry. And I need to get fucked. And you are in my fucking way. <laughs> wow, you had a great uh, good morning. spit huh? all over the microphone. <laughs> and she probably hadn't had her coffee yet either. No, time. I had not. I did not have coffee until after I had all of the electronics set up this morning. <laughs> that was... I'm glad I, I didn't feel well this morning when I was like... <laughs> so upset with you. Meh, meh, meh. I swear to God. Speaking of bad Catholics, did you know that if you follow the Pope on Twitter, you can get <laughs> plenary indulgences, which means you won't... You can get forgiven so you don't have to spend so much time in purgatory. All yes. you have to do is follow all the all you have to do is follow okay, the Pope. And you don't have Twitter. to be a Catholic, they say. You don't have to be okay, a Catholic, I just gotta, follow I got to ask a few questions because you know I went to Catholic school for 12 fucking yeah. years, okay? So if you follow him on Twitter, yes. does he give you like absolution? No. What he does is he says that he'll talk to God. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's going to talk to God. And he'll make sure that you don't spend as much time in purgatory. Do you know that purgatory is not mentioned in the Bible? No, it is not. It is a Catholic I, I convention. I was Catholic all my life, and then I married a, a, a minister, okay? So, Bible, this girl knows her Bible, okay? So, you know, I, I get, after I, you know, get older and, I, and I'm and i not no longer in, go to Catholic church, but I go to, you know, a Christian church, and they tell me that there's no purgatory in the Bible. Boy, did I feel deceived all them years, them <laughs> nuns telling me about purgatory. And, uh, and if you wear your scapula, scapula is this. Isn't it a bone in your, no, no, in no, your, no, no. 
No, no, a scapula. shoulder area it's called a scapula. It was because um, it falls over your. Scapula. No, it falls over both. It's 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 like a I don't I want to call it a string or a nice ribbon, and you have a little um, cloth charm bag. Not a charm bag. Witchcraft charm bag. No, no, it's like. A, <laughs> I want to say it's equivalent to a medal, but there's some kind of saint. Well, um, okay. I, I, yeah, I see a lot of the Hispanics wear uh, a string. It's like a thread right. around their neck and sometimes braided. with. Uh, and then there's a little square patch of cloth. It's usually a little pocket or okay. something. Okay, so with the Catholics, it, the scapula goes so you have one that falls here and one that falls like in the middle uh, between your shoulder blades. And it's called a scapula. And I remember... When I was growing up, went to Catholic school, and the nurses, t- the the nuns, telling us, "You die with your scapula on. You won't have to go to purgatory. You'll go straight to heaven." It's kind of like the Mormons with their their with underwear, their with their magic with their panties, you know. But they they have holes cut out of them so they can still have sex. Do you know under the sheets? Do you know that um that the magic underwear they can never have it not touching their body. Mm-hmm. So when they bathe. Um, you have to like you. You take one leg off and keep it on the other, and bathe that leg, and then put the uh, back on. It can. It's got to be touching a part of your body at all times. For a long time, you couldn't. Once you had them on, you could not take them off ever again. Those would be stanky. You had things. to wash yourself in them. And yeah. then how do you dry them? You stand in front of a fan. I do it every morning. Walk around and air dry. You 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 wash your your no. magic underwear. No, I just stand in front of a fan naked every morning. Oh, I gotcha. So, the only so, magic yeah. underwear I own are hot pink and go underneath my tutu. So my clean pussy smell goes to the bed and wakes up Michael. <laughs> you don't wake up to bacon in your house. You wake up to pussy. You wake up to pussy in my house. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> wait, how is how are you, wait? Oh, I'm confused. Okay. How are I'm gonna put this on you because I'm gonna see your reaction. How are you waking him up with the smell of your pussy after? he woke you up spanking him did he go back to bed after he spanked no, you I, I was that was a joke oh it was standing i stand in front of a fan when i get out of the shower to dry, to, to dry. Yeah. and it feels so good especially in this humidity right a great way to, so, to dry I'll, your chubby rolls I'll, mm-hmm. i will i will stand there spread my legs lift up my belly Ju- yeah. and, and dry it and then i'll i'll turn around so my ass <laughs> and then i'll bend over <laughs> It feels so good. Can What's that smell? Good. My clean brown eye. That's what it smells like. I want, <laughs> I want to get that on film. It smells I like wonder, I wonder dove if, soap. I wonder if that's a fetish. Well, like, because of the weekend we just spent, she's wondering if everything's a fetish. I want a fetish. Wait, wait, wait. She wants her own. We can... Let's create a fetish for you. No, let's create a fetish website for us where we get to do all the crazy fetish things we want to do and we can post pictures of them and make money. One of the things that I was, one of the fetishes that I was talking Sin about. SinCityBountyFetishSite.net. <laughs> uh, over, over this week we were interviewing somebody, I mentioned, uh, somebody was talking about toes. There's a big, there's a, everybody has a toe fetish, right? Mm-hmm. For some reason. And uh, one of the girls, she does a lot of toe filming, camming or whatever. And I said, has anybody ever asked you, because I've heard this before, has anybody ever asked you to grind hamburger meat in between your toes so it's no. just out? And what everything. made you think of that? For whatever reason, the thought of that. Uh, now, I like don't. My toes blah, blah, right now thinking of that. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Really? What, what made you think of that? I think I heard it before oh, or something like that. I dated this one guy but, one time. But I like, <laughs> I like, I do like the feel of stuff coming up between my toes. I think it's like sand or Just water. Just right or... like going, ooh, I want to wash my Really? Feet. I'm, I, and I don't have a foot fit. I don't want to see I it or anything like fish. that. But you like that I'm going to squish your feet through some pudding. So maybe I should Pudding film. filled water well, balloons. Well, that would be the first um, uh, entry onto our fetish page is you putting your toes in hamburger. We could do. I would do that. See that was just for point. us. And 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 you got to do the whole soap and the boobies and the. We, that's, that's what our camp for. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. It could be for fetish stuff. For fetish. Hey, stuff. we'll just put it on clips for sale, Sin City Bounty clip for sale, and we'll make some fucking money with this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is how our business meetings go. I would just like you all to know. <laughs> Hey, it actually like, usually involves I, a I, bottle of wine and some spaghetti, but this yeah. is how our business meetings go. I was amazed with the girls that were saying they sell their panties. I was like, fuck, I got a whole new car in my drawer. I'm like, can we sell oh, all of those? Shit. You have to wear them, and they have to smell like your pussy. Right. And you but, have to send them and, out. And, and the one thing was time, telling us they like period panties Yeah, all stuff. that and stuff. I was like, do you know how much money I can make? Just in my drawer? 
I know. You have to find them first. So these girls, this is why we love porn stars. is because all these girls, they market themselves like fucking crazy. And, and they, they find out. the people who are willing to buy panties for. You know what? I'm I really panty I gotta say, right and now. I respect every single fan that was yeah. there. And there's a lot of great. But there were a, free, a few questionables fans. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. You know, and I and I don't mean quite. I, I don't even know. That's not even a good word. But people that if I seen in the real world, I would be wondering if they were playing with a full deck. You know, but I, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. They enjoyed themselves and they, they paid did. their money they and did. they talked to us. But um, it made me wonder. Wonder what their fetish is. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure boobs was a, a oh, big one on our yeah. list. <laughs> We got every boob man. Anyway, so I, I wanted to say back back to the, uh, this is how our business meeting goes. Sometimes they go like this, but sometimes we come up with the best ideas ever. What about Booth? Hello. Yeah. That is a great One idea. of the tweets that uh, when we tweeted out, when we were advertising the motorboat booth, someone said, someone tweeted to us, that is the best idea ever. And I said, sitting at FanFest last year and watching the parade of cleavage, how could you not think of a motorboat booth? And the fact that we were doing it for breast cancer awareness yes. was so apropos for these scene yes. that we were in. And the girls were like, that they wanted, they're like, oh, we got to save the boobs. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of them, especially a couple of the ladies that sat down with us, had just been either diagnosed with a couple of well, things. Well, and one of them we sat down with the first day said that she was waiting on results. Yes. Yeah. So she had a big heart for what we were doing. Right. So. Yeah. I think, uh, I think Flexi said something about it being close to her heart. It was like, put up bum, but she's like, no, for real. Like, it was like, you know, <laughs> they're close to her heart. So, right. so uh, her boobies. another yeah. shout out to the lady heroes of the weekend who donated their breasticles for the questionable men that you just spoke and, of. And, you know, you know, we were talking about, this is another, we should be having this at a business meeting, but we had talked about prior to FanFest this year, getting people to sign up for the motorboat booth so we get the schedule ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Because we did it this year, we will be able to pre-book yes. people next yeah. year because they know what it's about and they're enthusiastic right. about it. Yeah, right. So we will be able to. So maybe if we do it soon, as soon, like within a couple of weeks of FanFest, you know what I mean? Like, a couple weeks before we can post it and they'll know when their girl is in the motorboat book. All right, Sierra, anything else for you? No, uh, Kelly guy's back in town, as you guys know. He came back specifically for these events. And we needed him and, and used and abused him. Uh, and we plan on using and abusing him for and the abused him like a dirty hoe. And really, honestly, he had the hardest job. He had to run around and talk <laughs> to every <laughs> single porn star in the building. Let me tell you something else that he did. I don't know if he wants me to tell <laughs> this or not, but as soon as the camera people went away, as soon as all the photographers went away and the German TV crew went away, he put his dollar in the jar. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I knew exactly which ones that Cali guy was about because... It was all the big boob girls. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, and, and, he's a big girl. And you're right. He'd wait boob, for it man. to clear. He'd wait for everybody else to take care of that boob girl. He was either the very first one with the big boob girl or, or the, the very last one. one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was great. And we, so he, he, but he's leaving very shortly after Well Rounded. So oh, okay. like, I, I, I was like, please give me like three days after because I think we should just have some time where we sit on the couch in our underwear and drink wine and eat. Are you doing the whole Well Rounded week? Um, I probably not going to do the day stuff because I have to work unless I can get out early a couple of days. Um, but, but you are going to the party. I'll yeah, I think we are going to be doing the parties. Okay. All so. right. I check into the Plaza Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This, uh, we're moving into our last half hour. This is the Courageous Valley of Sin City. We will be back right after this. <laughs> 